Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. It is Sunday morning and I want you to check out my shirt before we get into the fishing reports here. Check this out. There's a UFO up there and there's a tent down there and it looks like that UFO is getting ready to abduct the people inside. So just remember, if you find yourself abducted and you find yourself being probed by an alien, I told you first, I warned you so. You know, you might rethink that that whole tent adventure. Anyway, I'm kidding around. I got a few UFO shirts. I love them. Um, let's talk fishing. Um, but, you know, any discussion of fishing right now has to be tempered by a discussion of forest fires. You can see behind me here, it looks nice and overcast and cool. It's not. It's very warm. It's very early in the morning. That is smoke primarily from the Dixie fire, but from a bunch of other fires too. The wind has turned, it's kind of, the breeze is coming out of the north and it has covered the whole foothill region all the way down to Sacramento with smoke. And uh, my heart really goes out to the folks up in and around the, the Lake Elmanor area. Um, the devastation up there has been massive. It's now the third largest fire in California history. Um, John Crotty lost Quail Lodge right there by the dam at Lake Elmanor. And countless other people have lost their property, their businesses. Um, and one of the most beautiful areas of the state, I mean, I've been going up there since I was a kid, has just been absolutely devastated. Um, at places, the fire has burned right down to Lake Elmanor. It's unclear what the real damage is because because the firefighters are focused on trying to stop this fire and the crews that assess the damage haven't been able to get out in the field yet. But uh, we know the town of Greenville is, is largely gone. As I said, Quail Lodge is gone. Uh, John and his wife are great people and uh, they put you know a lot, of, a lot of blood and sweat into that property and uh, it's, just, it's just devastating and it's, it's, it's stunning what's going on around Northern California and around the whole West right now. Um, we had a fire right here in the, the center of the foothills region the other day. It's still burning but it looks like they've got it under control and they, they got lucky. We have some great firefighters here in California but uh, the weather also cooperated on that fire. I'm talking about the river fire which was just west of Colfax. Um, it went from zero to a thousand acres in like 90 minutes. Um, it burned upwards of 50 homes. But uh, as I say, as bad as that is, and it's horrible for anybody who lost their property, their home, so on and so forth, um, we got lucky on that one. They, they were able to stop that fire before it got really out of control and really, really bad. So having said all that, um, we have some good fishing great in some cases fishing on tap right now and it looks like we are we are going to have a super productive fall i'll talk about that in a second um what have i been up to i had planned on on fishing twice this week i am starting my scouting for the fall guiding season it doesn't sound like there's going to be trout fishing at collins lake this fall um, because of the low water level um i'm i'm looking ahead i have bought some state-of-the-art hobie lynx kayaks i'm going to be offering kayak trips and some boat trips this fall i've just been trying to dial in the locations um one place i visited this week was rollins lake and you're seeing some of that footage right now i had a very productive outing um i was pulling my trout tricks worms and threaded night crawlers with various blades and uh, turbo flashers stuff like that um, i caught a very nice bass on the trout tricks worm um, I caught another uh, trout on the trout tricks worm and I caught a couple of rainbow trout on threaded night crawlers behind many willow leaf dodgers as you as you see here in the footage that's going by. Um, it was a, a very good trip. The lake is almost full for whatever reason. Um, the trout are there. Um, planters from this spring, they've acclimated to the lake. They're holding down in the water column and uh, they are ready to go. I didn't spend a lot of time fooling, fooling around with them because I didn't want to beat up on the trout that, that I'm hoping to guide on here. In, a, in several weeks. So anyway, that was a productive outing. It was a fun outing. And I saw a lot of bass exploding on the surface too. And I could tell you both the trout and that, uh, that bass I caught on that worm, they put up exceptional fights. Um, I wanted to go over and fish Bullard's Bar Reservoir later in the week, but we had that river fire break out and uh, just didn't know what the situation was. And I would have had to kind of drive through that region to get to Bullard's Bar from where I live. So called that trip off. Um, I'm definitely going to fish this coming week. I'm not sure where. Um, 
I want to point out a uh, a viewer picture here, a guy that's uh, bought some of my gear and he's putting it to good use up in Oregon. This is Rusty. You see him holding up a big, beautiful rainbow right there. Um, he has been having a lot of success on my trolling flies and on my signature series grubs, primarily the Tui Chub color grubs up where he fishes. Um, so he's very happy. He's a regular viewer here on the channel. So. Good work, Rusty. Keep after them. Keep catching those fish and keep on watching the channel. Um, as far as fishing other destinations go, um, let's talk about the, one of the three of the bigger reservoirs in the state. Um, number one choice, best fishing in the state, uh, kind of in my opinion, um, is Don Pedro Reservoir. They're catching kokanees, they're catching rainbows, and they're catching some epic five plus pound king salmon out there. You can catch them all at the same time, stagger your baits on your downrigger. Um, you wanna roll shad or pull uh, minnow tubes behind blades for the kings. Those are the deepest fish in the water column, anywhere from 65 to 80 feet deep. Um, above those, you're gonna find the kokanee, standard kokanee offerings, you know, uh, tubes, spinners, the colorful stuff. Have some fun, mix and match, and right above those kokanee, you're gonna find a rainbow trout. Small blades like my mini willow leaf and a worm, a seps, um, strike master and a worm, that's working. Grubs are working. Small trolling flies are working. Anything that catches rainbow trout, remember it. At Don Pedro, the rainbows earn their living by feeding on shad, but they're more than willing to take a swipe at a worm and stuff like that. So if you use that strategy, you could go to Don Pedro, you could catch all three species of fish and you might find yourself hooked up with a five or six or seven pound king salmon. And uh, I can tell you from personal experience, those fish fight like tigers. If you wanna go on a guided trip, Monty Smith, Gold Country Sport Fishing. He's a top stick over there. There's other guides over there. But uh, I have fished Don Pedro a ton with Monty over the years and uh, I've always had a wonderful time. He's a great guy, he's a great guide and he's a great instructor. He doesn't like to toot his own horn, but he knows everything there is to know about trolling for trout and kokanee, and he is more than willing to answer your questions. So a day on the water with money is always a good time all the way around. Um, Lake Berryessa, Lake Berryessa is kicking out the biggest kokanee in the state. Um, <clears throat> I haven't talked to anybody that's over there. It looks like it's a little bit of a technical bite. Some days guys do well, some days guys don't do so well. But if you know how to kokanee fish, get on over there, get out to the big island, the usual spots, try to unravel that bite. And the, uh, the fish, they're kind of epic size, 18 to 19 inch fish, maybe some 20 inch fish. Um, I haven't seen any pictures of 20s, but they are there. Um, they're swimming around. Standard Berryessa offerings, it seems like you, you gotta un, unravel that bite a little bit. You gotta find the fish, and you gotta find out what they want on any given day. <clears throat> But it's well worth your effort because, uh, you know, no place kicks out kokanee like Berryessa. When it's right, when Berryessa is kicking out the big fish, I mean, you know, I've just had some, some very memorable outings out there. Um, actually, my two biggest kokanee of all time came from Berryessa. Both of them came when I was fishing with... Uh, with um, the president of Kokanee Power, Gary Co. So anyway, Berryessa, great kokanee fishing, some big rainbows mixed in. Moving north, Lake Shasta, the lake level is down, but it's still a big giant lake and you can still launch your boat there. Um, fishing had been good. It's a little disappointing right now. Robert Howard, he's my buddy. He's up there, he fishes every day. Um, he is struggling a little bit <clears throat> most most days. The smoke is kind of getting to me. Um, he's he's struggling most days. He's still catching three or four rainbows a morning, but he was catching you know eight, 10, 12 rainbows per morning. So it's gotten a little more challenging over there, but it's probably gonna bounce back real soon. We had the full moon and then we've had kind of a cool down. And I know it sounds crazy when it cools down from 100 degrees to you know 90 degrees, but that can absolutely affect the bite, which is kind of a stumper since the fish are down 60, 70 feet feeding on shad, but it can affect the bite. And that's what Robert's using. He's fishing anywhere from 40 to about 70 feet deep. He's been playing with some shallower lines because he's seeing surface activity. He's seeing small rainbows jumping out of the water. The water's you know 75 degrees plus there, but he's still seeing rainbows up near the surface, which is kind of kind of bizarre, but uh, he's mixing things up. He's working the water column and that's what you should do too. Get out there, cover ground, pull some shad, you know, shad imitating offerings. You want to get out there early. There's a lot of wake boats and stuff out on the water, a lot of recreational boaters. And uh, 
that segues us into the fall action. A lot of lakes that have water in them, like Shasta, like Rollins, places like that, they're getting their share of recreational boaters because places like, you know, Folsom, let's face it, Folsom is closed to pretty much anybody except kayakers and guys in fishing boats. The, the speed limit's five miles an hour and launching is a, is a real challenge. There's one launch ramp on the lake. It's very narrow, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the recreational boaters, they're going to other locations and they tend to be pretty crowded right about now. So that is gonna end though. As we get into fall, remember kids are starting to go back to school next week. As we get into fall, it's gonna start cooling off. There's gonna be more or less of those recreational guys and there's gonna be more opportunity for us fishermen. Um, you're gonna to have to plan your shots. I'm thinking ahead. As I said, I've invested a bunch of money in state-of-the-art Hobie kayaks because I wanna be able to fish at some locations where I might not be able to launch my boat. Um, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit in terms of species to kick off. I'm, you know, trout are gonna be the centerpiece, but if we get in on some great topwater bass action, we are gonna take advantage of that too because they are a hoot to catch in the right situation. Um, but looking forward, as things start to cool off, we are gonna have very good action in the mountains. French Meadows is gonna go off. It's been tough up there. You can still launch a boat up there. It's low, but it's high enough to launch a boat. And kayakers, you can launch all day long, every day. It's awesome. The bite's been off. That bite's gonna bust off in September or October and uh, the action's gonna be very good. And that's, that's the same thing you're gonna see at a lot of mountain lakes. You're gonna see that at Jackson Meadows. Eagle Lake's another one. The lake's very low. You can still launch a boat there. I don't know how much longer you'll be able to launch a boat there, but you are gonna have epic action up there in October, in November, maybe right up to the closer depending on the weather. So. You know, if you're thinking about going fishing right now, got to kind of weigh it. You know, gas prices are high. Fires are a challenge. The air quality kind of stinks. So you got to kind of weigh that out. But I can tell you, we are in for some epic fall action. If you're a trout junkie and uh, you've got a limited budget to get out and fish a limited amount of times, save your budget for October and November. Get your gear in order because with lake levels down, the fish are going to be concentrated. They're gonna feed heavy and hard, just like they always do in the fall. And uh, the action is gonna be absolutely off the hook for big rainbows, browns. Heck, there might even still be some king salmon in the mix here and there at different lakes. So that's about the size of it right now. I got my fingers crossed for an early fall. I wanna see us get out from under this dark cloud of fire danger. I mean, we've already had, I, I believe we've already had more acres burn this summer than we did last summer. And we're really not even into the heart of what is traditionally, you know, wildfire season here in Northern and Central California. So it's been tough. Um, our thoughts go out to, to all the folks that have been affected by these fires, especially the people that have lost their homes and their property and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. If uh, you're looking for top-notch trout gear, including our rods, rods are back in stock, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com. I want to thank you guys for all the support you've been giving the channel. Um, if you're looking for fish, Barry Essa, Don Pedro, they're excellent right now. <clears throat> That's smoke. But uh, we've got a lot better fishing than is going on right now, right around the corner when things start to cool off in the foothills and the mountains and that fall trout bite gets underway. Anyway, I got some chores to do. I'm gonna put on a mask here because I think this is pretty unhealthy air. I've been moving firewood. I will catch you later. Have a great day and I'll see you real soon here on YouTube. Thank you guys.